Hello, I'm Maury Gertz and I'm a consultant in hematology at Mayo Clinic. I've been a lifelong uh, career researcher in multiple myeloma and amyloidosis. This year's American Society of Hematology is really the most exciting in a quarter century and really allows us to really speculate as to the true possibility of a functional cure of multiple myeloma. The breadth of myeloma research ongoing now is remarkable. Daratumumab, the monoclonal antibody approved for the treatment of myeloma, has for the first time been shown to improve overall survival in newly diagnosed patients when combined with a standard triplet combination used in Europe. There are now evidence that four drug combinations, including daratumumab, bortezomib, thalidomide, and dexamethasone are also highly effective, causing a dramatic increase in complete response rates and stringent complete response rate with minimal residual disease negativity as defined by failing to find one myeloma cell in a million. There have been major updates on the use of carfilzomib, also known as kyprolis. This agent has been combined with daratumumab, lenalidomide, and dexamethasone and is producing remarkable depth of response with minimal associated toxicity, very few patients being taken off treatment as a consequence of toxicity. This is also even being explored as a preventative in the smoldering multiple myeloma realm, again, completely eradicating the disease. It'll take time before we know whether this is translated into a cure but for the time being, these patients have no evidence of multiple myeloma. Selenexor, recently approved for the treatment of multiple myeloma, is now being explored in combination with lenalidomide as well as carfilzomib, and it's been demonstrated to this point that you can use lower doses, resulting in fewer side effects such as nausea, vomiting, appetite loss, and weight loss, and it's likely that this drug will become increasingly utilized in the management overall of multiple myeloma. Pomalidomide is now being shown to have dramatic salvage capability. One presentation looked at pomalidomide with cyclophosphamide and dexamethasone, showing very durable responses that provide truly meaningful benefit for our myeloma patients. Even going beyond all the chemotherapy, what we're seeing now with the expansion of immunotherapy, such as CAR-T, chimeric antigen receptor T cells, showing improved outcomes in multiple myeloma, as well as so many available combinations, bifunctional CAR-Ts, CAR-NK, natural killer CARs that can be used. CARs engineered for greater persistence in the myeloma patient to allow for more durable responses very exciting. Bites. So these are antibodies to dual antigens. For example, one bite would be against BCMA, and then the second component would be against CD3 to bring the killer T cells in proximity to the myeloma cells. Shows relatively low toxicity, and again, significant response rates in a heavily pretreated population. These immunotherapies are likely to increase in their activity, availability, and ability to produce durable and deep responses. Although not exactly multiple myeloma, light chain amyloidosis, a closely associated disease, has also been shown to have some important therapeutic breakthroughs. A phase three trial using the oral drug Ixazomib, its trade name is Ninlaro, has been shown to produce improved outcomes compared to non-exazomib-containing regimens for patients with newly diagnosed light-chain amyloidosis. There's an amyloid-dissolving antibody called NEO-D1. It has been demonstrated to reduce all-cause mortality as well as cardiac hospitalization in patients with stage 4 cardiac amyloidosis. In other words, the patients who have greatest need actually get the greatest benefit. I think it's a remarkable time for the myeloma patient community. I think we're at the point now where it's not unreasonable for patients to expect to outlive their disease and that myeloma will not be 
the death threat that it once was. Thank you.